We are officially live. Hello. Let me move my microphone so you can actually hear me. There we go. Good afternoon or evening or night, depending on where you are in the world. Bipeds. Hi, I'm Stephen Sashin, co-founder and CEO of Zero Shoes. It says so right up there too, right there. There, zero shoes. And this is our uh, monthly Ask Me Anything, a call that I do on the third Tuesday of every month, which happens to be this one. And this is where you can literally ask me anything about zero shoes or about barefoot running or minimalist footwear or how you make their transition or orthotics or art support or other shoes that have nothing to do with what we're doing or what I'm making for dinner because I've become quite the chef lately or anything you can think of. And the way it works is really simple. I'm going to click over here. Uh, if you put a comment down below or wherever you can put comments, I will see it on my screen. So when you see me looking over there, it's because I'm reading something somebody wrote, and then I will respond in real time. One thing, by the way, I just want to address, um, not part of the ask me anything per se, <clears throat> excuse me, but we are, if you are in the European Union or know somebody in the European Union, let them know that they should go to zeroshoes.com, sorry, zeroshoes.eu, and you'll see at actually zeroshoes.eu slash special dash sale. We're having a big sale uh, on a lot of products in our from our EU website. And we're doing this because we ran it. We basically didn't get a big enough warehouse. We have new products coming in for the fall. So you can save up to 70%, 71% on some select products at zero shoes dot eu slash special dash sale so just fyi um about the i can't read my, i'm not wearing my glasses so i can't see basset um however you say your name my apologies for totally not knowing how to pronounce your name it says hi trying to test to see if i'm actually live and the answer is yes i am so um so once again uh zero shoes dot eu for some special things going on if you're in the eu or know people in the eu now since we're just getting this ball rolling one thing i want to do for people who may not be hip to what we're doing here at zero shoes I'll give you the world's fastest explanation. Uh, we just want to let your body do what's natural. Most big shoe companies, they're basically trying to convince you that there's something wrong with you. Your feet don't work if you let them just live on their own. And they've created all these interesting products that don't work to solve that problem. So, you know, your average athletic shoe, for example, looks like this. First of all, is this the shape of your foot? If it is, it's not supposed to be. You're not supposed to squeeze your toes together. Do you do push-ups like this? Of course you don't. You do push-ups like this. It gives you better balance, better strength production. Same thing with your feet. So they're also stiff. That's not even where your foot bends, and it's super stiff everywhere else. Your feet have a quarter of the bones and joints of your entire body in them. Joints are made to let things move. Your feet are supposed to move. That's for balance, agility, and mobility. If you don't let them do that job, all that function tries unsuccessfully to move into your ankle, your knee, your hip, and your back which can give you problems. So we're trying to let your feet do what's natural, let your feet do their job so the rest of your body can do its job. But what else about this shoe? It elevates your heel. That messes with your posture and puts strain on your knees and your back. This cushioning, it makes it so you can't feel things. You have more nerve endings in the soles of your feet than anywhere but your fingertips and your lips. That's to tell your brain what you're feeling down there on the ground to know if you're stepping on or in the right or wrong thing. And that way your brain can control the rest of your body, again, for balance, agility, and mobility, starting with being able to move those feet with all those joints. So that's the second thing. By the way, this cushioning doesn't actually cushion. I know that sounds crazy, but here's what cushioning cushioning does. This is the world's fastest physics lesson. Cushioning spreads out the force that you feel on the ground so you don't feel as much on your feet, but that force is still going up into your body, which is why research shows that no matter how much cushioning you have, a little bit or a lot, it actually does not reduce the impact forces. In fact, this is going to sound crazy. You actually sometimes hit the ground harder when you have cushioning because your brain is trying to get that feedback and it can't feel anything, so it often leads you to hitting harder. Arch support is in here. By the way, that's an interesting thing. Um, so research shows something really, really simple. Supporting a joint makes it weaker. You put a cast on your arm. I mean, you don't just put one there. If you broke your arm, they'd put a cast on you. Your arm comes out weaker because you don't use it. Same thing happens with your feet. Research from Katrina Protopapa shows that. If you just take healthy people, put arch support in their shoes, if they didn't wear it before, they get up to 17% weaker and lose 17% of the muscle mass in their feet in just 12 weeks. So we try to do the opposite of that. And I'm going to hit your comments in a second, in just a moment. Um, so here's what we do. We make shoes that have a wider foot-shaped toe box so your toes can spread and relax. 
low to the ground for balance and agility. We don't elevate your heel to mess with your posture or have that toe spring, that giant lift right here, which puts strain on the tendons on your foot. We don't have that either. Flexible enough to let your feet bend and move the way they're supposed to. Um, the sole is designed to give you that traction and protection that you want, but also that ground feeling that your brain needs to help you move effectively and efficiently. And they're so lightweight. We've literally had people not only forget to take them off at the end of the day, but uh, also go to bed still wearing them because they forgot they had them on. So, and they're affordable. Um, we have a 5,000 mile sole warranty on our sole and we have shoes, boots and sandals that people use for everything from taking a walk to running hundred mile ultra marathons to hanging out with their friends to yoga, CrossFit, uh, you name it, they do it. So a bunch of questions came in. Let me jump into that really, really quickly. Uh, so first there's a couple of hellos. Hello from Inga and Cascade. Hello from Marco in California. Marco says, are we currently experimenting with other sole tread materials? Always. We're doing a lot of experimenting all the time. Not all of our shoes have the same tread. Not all of them have the same sole material. Uh, Jordan, I would love a watch a sandal with an updated lacing system for easier fitting and adjustments on the go with a five mil sole. Well, we're doing one. See, when you're doing something with a five mil sole, it's really, really tricky to make something that has all those features because there's nowhere to put certain things. But we have developed, and I've been working on this literally for years, a new Warache style lacing system for um, our Z Trail sandal that is super, super interesting. Because right now the Z Trail is just goes over your foot, sport sandal style. We've got a Warache version we're working on. But by the way, Jordan and anybody else, if you have a feature request, go to zeroshoes.com slash feedback and put that in there with as many details as you can, because that's how our product team knows what to do next. Diane, maybe feet are shaped, maybe my feet are shaped like that. And now you just made me feel like a freak. Well, um, A, if your feet are shaped like that, if their toes are squeezed together, it's probably from wearing something that did that. And we've had people put on our shoes, no promises here. I'm not a doctor and don't play one on TV. But we've had a lot of people when they let their feet start to not have to do this, they start to do this, but that's okay. Even if your feet are shaped like that, you can still wear something like this and have all those other benefits that we provide. Uh, Mark, I work in construction over her guy saying he hates orthotics because they make him feel like he's walking on a mattress. He used your line. I like that one. That's a good one. Uh, Diane, um, you'll want to read mine now. I, by the way, I can't, oh, there, that's funny. By the way, just so I can see the comments here, I can't keep track of them in my head. So if you're making a comment on your comment, the odds of my being able to remember that very small. I'll do what I can. Jason says, work boots on our to-do list. Really challenging to make something that lets your foot still move naturally while still providing protection and the, not support, but the things you need for like stepping on a shovel or on a ladder, but it's very high on our list. That's the next comment from Matthew. It's so, um, how do I want to put it? Um, human beings have an interesting thing. We think if we can think of a thing, it must be possible. There's a lot of things we think of that are either impossible or really, really difficult. This one's just on the really difficult level. Uh, let's see, where else? Um, Diane, I do tell everyone your shoes solve my plantar fasciitis. Uh, it's wonderful to hear. Inga, I wear my aptos in the garden. I threw them in the washing machine, air dried them. They turn out fine. How would you recommend cleaning zero shoes? just like that. If soap and water on your, by hand doesn't work, um, I would do that. I'd also recommend putting them in a bag and make sure there's a lot of other things in the washing machine, cold water, um, and then you don't even have to tumble them or you don't, yeah, just pull them out and let them air dry is best. Do you think we could get a leather work boot in the future? Same idea. And um, again, um, Motorola 762, which is a Tell your parents that was a strange name to give you. And then drop that at zeroshoes.com slash feedback with as much detail as you can think of. Um, Chili Billy ordered a pair on clearance. Turns out to be, ooh, defective pair. Um, that's really weird. And they're, yeah, they're saying destroy them to get a replacement. That's so you don't have to send them back and waste our time. But we had people in the past who would say, hey, I got something that's defective. And then they'd, um, they would demand that we send them something else and they'd keep them both. And if it's defective, it's defective. We're happy to stand by our 24 month manufacturer's warranty, but we're not going to give away shoes for free. So show that you cut them apart and made them unusable. We'll send you a brand new pair without you having to send anything back, et cetera. Um, if it's a semi-functional pair, that's a different story. You can send them back if you like, but uh, again, it's kind of, that's also, but we're not gonna, if it's semi-functional, we're not gonna send a semi-functional pair to donate to somewhere else. We wanna give people real shoes and we donate tens of thousands of pairs of shoes to people that are good shoes. So we don't wanna send people something that's crap. That's uh, the simple thing I can say, but we're always, look, no policy is etched in stone. If you've got better ideas, zeroshoes.com slash feedback. Happy to hear it. Gabby says, love my new Gracie's. Thank you. We love them too. Dana, I started wearing my Z trails again this morning around the house. You know, I hadn't worn the Z trail in a little while. 
mostly because I'm <laughs> falling off my chair. Hold on. I'm mostly wearing those. Um, but I put them on the other day. My wife and I got a dog. We've never had a dog before. I'm walking the dog more. And now that it's 90 degrees out, um, I can't wear, I can't do bare feet on the pavement. So I put on my Z trails. I forgot how much I love those. Uh, they're a blast. Jack says off the top of my head, what research supports the idea that shoes with support are counterproductive? Like I just mentioned, um, there's actually a number of pieces of research. One is from Katrina Protopapas that shows that um, if you put arch support in the shoes of healthy individuals, like I said a moment ago, the strength of the foot and the size of the muscles is reduced by up to 17% in as little as 12 weeks. The question for you, A, there's two. One is um, when is weaker better than stronger? I'm going to go that for the answer, never. The second is we're not actually the intervention. We don't need to prove that arch support is a problem. They need to prove that arch support is helpful. And there really isn't. In fact, wait, I'm going to put something. Wait, I'm going to find a link for you because you are going to like this. If I can give me one sec, I got to find this zero shoes dot com um, orthotics um, I'm going to point you to an, a really interesting blog post that I made a while ago and let's see if I can find it um, arch support um, I think it might be called no support for support or something like that um, I'm having a hard time finding what I wanted give me one sec site zero shoes dot com orthotics give it one more try there we go orthotics versus barefoot running is actually the name of this post and it's a really interesting article because what you're going to find, I'm going to put this in the chat. What you're going to find is that um, there's no support for support is the best way I can put it. So you'll see there's um, world famous researchers saying orthotics were originally designed and support was originally designed to give your foot time to recover if it was injured. Never, the idea was never that you're supposed to put your foot in some position with some hard thing that doesn't let your foot move in a permanent basis. I, Dr. Irene Davis from Harvard, her analogy is if you got uh, in a car accident and they put you in a neck brace, you would never think that you were supposed to wear that for your whole life. You would think that you wear that to recover while you're doing exercises and getting as much motion back as possible. It was always the same intention with arch support and orthotics. In fact, I'll tell you why there's arch support in a shoe. You're gonna love this one. So way back when, in the early 70s, footwear all looked like this. Even the original Nike waffle trainer basically looked like this. Mostly it was flat, had a tiny bit of foam, flexible, lightweight. It still was a pointy toe box, but that's a whole other story. Well, then some doctors who were in the same building as uh, the early Nike guys, Bill Bowerman from Nike said, uh, hey, we're getting a bunch of runners who are getting Achilles tendonitis. What do you recommend? And these doctors said, well, clearly they've been wearing higher heel dress shoes and that made their Achilles shorten. So you need to make a higher heel running shoe to accommodate their Achilles, higher heel running shoe. So that's what Nike did. Um, now here's the kicker with a higher heel shoe. This is something that Dr. Daniel Lieberman showed from when he was at Harvard, still is at Harvard, that if you take someone who's habitually running in a minimalist shoe, running in something that's really low to the ground, really flat or barefoot, their heel barely misses the ground as their foot touches down. When you put a big thick heel, they end up hitting the heel on the ground in front of where their foot normally lands. So their leg is basically straight as they land on the heel. This is called overstriding and heel striking. Well, check this out. Your heel, as you may know, hold on, grab a heel, grab a foot. Heel's a ball, okay? When you land on a ball, guess what? It's unstable. So then they started to try to build, then they started to try to build in stability, motion control, which doesn't work because this is a little bit of foam. When you hit the ground as a, let's say you weigh 150 pounds and you're a casual runner, you hit the ground with about 400 to 500 pounds of force. There's no amount of foam that's going to protect you from that or be able to control the motion. So then they started making the soles wider. You can see it's wider than your heel. Well, that actually makes it even worse because then when you land on the outside edge of that, it makes your foot do this really fast. That's pronation hyperpronation. So then they built it on the inside to try to control it. It just doesn't work is the simple response. In fact, if you go to zeroshoes.com slash blog, the first post is a really amazing article from Dr. Dan Lieberman, Dr. Isabel, um, uh, Isabel Sacco, Dr. Sarah Ridge, Dr. Irene Davis, and a number of others that talks about everything I'm, I'm saying right now. So here's the kicker though. When you land with your foot way out in front of you um, on your heel, by the time your foot comes down, it's essentially flat. Okay. Now, here's an analogy. When you do a biceps curl, are you stronger here or stronger here? The answer is you're stronger here. 
You can, you can basically resist force better here than you can here. Well, it's the same thing with your foot. When you land with your foot, your foot has three arches in it. They're supposed to be engaged. This is a really strong structure. But when you land on your heel, by the time your foot comes down, it's flat. So you're putting a lot of force on those ligaments and tendons when they can't apply that force back. They can't magically make your foot do this when they're, when they're under stress. They have to do that in advance, basically. So that means you're putting strain on your plantar fascia. That was causing plantar fasciitis. So they put in arch support so that you didn't need to use the muscles, ligaments, and tendons in your feet. Which, again, backing up to where I started with Christina Protopapas, Katrina Protopapas, makes your feet weaker over time. <sighs> that was a long thing. I hope that makes sense. So <laughs> I can come back to it if we need to. Anyway, a bunch of other things came in here. Let me see what they are. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, yay, 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 yay. Um, uh, there we go. So by the way, Jack, that was off the top of my head. If I go and look at all the research, I could show you dozens of other articles that back up everything I just said. And in fact, if you go to zeroshoes.com slash blog and look at that first entry that's there right now, might change, uh, that's this um, research about minimalist footwear, look at the footnotes. It's like a page and a half, almost two pages of research, 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 demonstrating not only the value of natural movement, but the problems with things like this. All right. So Diane says, thank you for making vegan options and for putting up with my silly comments as well as my serious ones. My pleasure for both. Uh, Gabby, I wore my pre orders all over museums in Manhattan and the Bronx the other day, and they felt great. My wife and I did that a month ago. Lena had never been to New York. I lived there for 10 years. We were walking around in our shoes. Not only did we have no problems walking around all day, every day, but we got recognized three times. In fact, kind of four. The first time we walked out of our Airbnb and a guy on a bike went by us, and then slammed on his brakes and spun around and yelled, zero shoes. Um, and that was fun. And then we're on a street corner on Astor Place. And Lena's over here. I'm here. And there's this um, uh, Asian woman standing next to us who's just looking at us kind of strangely and smiling a little too much. And then she goes, uh, I'm from Voice of America. I interviewed you two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. And then the, the third and a half, almost fourth, we're in Central Park and we ended up walking by a guy who was sitting on a bench and he was wearing a competitor's shoe. I won't mention which. And we sat down about 30 or 40 feet away. And then he came over, like recognized us and was very excited. But it was more that he, than he just recognized us. He said, were you guys on the Lower East Side three days ago? <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, he saw us walking around the Lower East Side, but didn't say hi then, and then saw us again in Central Park. So anyway, that's that. Um, and by the way, I don't know which museums you went to all over Manhattan. We went to the Cloisters, which I had never been to before. Amazingly fun. Leo, I use my zero shoes for work as a construction worker and love them. There you go. Uh, Diane, do it again. I missed you falling off your chair. <laughs> I didn't fall off. I almost fell off. That's a big difference. If you haven't seen it, by the way, there's a thing called the old man challenge. You take a pair of socks and a pair of shoes, put them in front of you, stand on one foot, put on a sock, put on a shoe, switch to the other foot, put on a sock, put on a shoe without putting your other foot down. I did that. And then I did it. And then I took them off. And then I did it blindfolded. So, uh, and I consider myself an old man now. I just turned 62 weeks ago. So, um, or 10 days ago, something like that. So I'm cool with the old man challenge. You can find that on Instagram. You can find it on Facebook. I think I posted it on our website too. Rich, um, I saw you race in Boulder a couple of weeks ago. For somebody who hates to run, you're pretty darn fast. I don't hate to run. I hate running anything longer than hundred meters. Anything up to a hundred, I'm thrilled with. More than that, eh, not so much. Um, and I'll be out at one of those meets again in the not too distant future. Uh, Diane, again, also, I think it's really beautiful. You and your wife created something so great together. We do too. We Look, where we've gotten to is beyond where we ever imagined. And it wouldn't have happened were it not for a ton of luck. And the luckiest thing ever is that Lena ended up being roommates with someone that I knew. And that's how, well, we met at a brunch. All right, I'll give you the whole story. We met at a brunch on the day that my then fiance and I were going to go look for somewhere to have a wedding. And Lena was at that brunch with about eight other people. And afterwards, my fiance, who is a large Nordic woman, you can't tell necessarily from video, I am not a large or Nordic guy. Um, my then fiance, Monique, was very upset after brunch saying, you should be getting married to someone like that. She's in your tribe. She had this thing about tribes. We were not in the same tribe. Big, tall Nordic woman, not so tall, not Nordic guy. And I said, 
yeah, don't be ridiculous. First of all, I haven't dated someone shorter than me in like 10 years. And secondly, I'm thinking, oh my God, you're totally right. But Lena wanted nothing to do with me. Even though she was living with a friend of mine, you know, I'd bump into her all the time. Uh, she would avoid me like the plague. But the luckiest thing ever is that some reason, like four years after I met her, she decided that I was worth being her. It was okay for me to be her friend. And then a couple of years after that, we started dating. And then a couple of years after that, we got married. And so, and here we are. If it weren't for that lucky thing of Lena deciding that I was okay to hang out with, none of this would have happened. So I consider myself um, unbearably lucky and I uh, am forever grateful for, uh, for that. So uh, some more things came in. Jack says, couldn't you argue that customer satisfaction helped drive the shift to shoes with support? Um, actually, no. And I'll tell you why. Why is the third-party support business, the third-party orthotic business, a multi, multi, multi-billion dollar business? Or actually, I'll give you a better answer. Yes, it can provide temporary support and temporary comfort, but that doesn't mean it's good for you. Again, when is getting weaker better than staying or improving your strength? It's not. So the whole, the whole point of orthotics originally was to reduce pain when you had a problem, not to wear them permanently. So when people, uh, I'll tell you a story. Guy that I know said, uh, big deal investor, said, I can't wear, I can't invest in your product because I, or your company because I can't wear your shoes. I said, why? He said, well, I need orthotics. I have arch support and in my shoes. I said, well, what's it like when you're barefoot in your house? He said, barefoot in my house, I have hardwood floors. I can't do that. Does it make sense to you that a human being who is otherwise completely healthy would not be able to walk barefoot for a couple of steps? And what happened was he did have an injury 20 years earlier and his doctor put him in an orthotic and kept putting him in new and different orthotics for 20 years at the cost of over $1,000 a year until he couldn't walk like a normal human being. And I said to him, I could give you some exercises to do while you're watching TV. In six weeks, you could walk around your house barefoot. And if you wanted to keep going from there, I could have you running a 5K in maybe two more months. And he looked at me like I was crazy. I said, dude, I was a pre-med. Just because your doctor, and I don't know why I put air quotes around that, just as your doctor said you need to spend $1,000 with him every year, doesn't mean he's right. I know my friends who actually became doctors, they were not the smartest guys in the room. And if you're making money selling orthotics to people, you're going to keep selling orthotics to people because, again, you're not going to necessarily hear when they go and try another and another and another. But the bottom line is really simple. What we need, what needs to be proven is the value of a long-term use of an orthotic versus the value of natural movement. And the research could not be clearer. Merely walking in minimalist shoes builds intrinsic foot muscle strength as much as doing a foot exercise program. Um, in fact, the person who did that research, Dr. Sarah Ridge, says you'll get those benefits from zero shoes, even though they used a different shoe in the study. The research is undeniable that supporting any joint and not letting it move makes things weaker. And again, weaker is just simply never better than stronger. The point of orthotics was to help you recover from an injury, not to be worn full time. Read uh, here. Wait, I'm going to find that. Read the post that I that I posted before and let me know what you think. And look at the research from, wait, I'm going to find that other post too. Hold on. And look at uh, zeroshoes.com slash blog and take a look at this bit of research as well. Now, by the way, when I do this, I'm going to, I'll tell you something that's kind of funny. Um, it's pointless for me to say things like this. And the reason is, when, when human beings believe things, you can't tell them something they believe is wrong and have them go, oh, never works. I can't seem to help myself from doing it anyway. The only thing I can do really is ask you questions like, when is weaker better than stronger? What's, what's it like if you're walking barefoot on the beach for just a little bit of time? If it feels good at all, then that's good enough to start the conversation. Because if it hurts after that, it can hurt if you've been wearing something that makes your feet weak over time. Um, so why is it that power lifters tend to be either barefoot or in socks or in totally flat shoes that don't give them any support. They don't use support. Why is, let me see one other one. Why don't gymnasts wear shoes? Why don't, I mean, we can just like point to a bunch of things that hopefully will make you go, huh, maybe it's not what I thought. And then maybe, you know, you'll end up looking into some things like this post that I just made. And maybe that'll open up a possibility. That's all I can do. But my apologies for trying to say, yeah, what you, I don't know what you actually do or don't believe. But my apologies if I say to somebody something that uh, argues with what you believe, because I know the natural inclination is to try to pick apart my argument um, rather than consider a different belief. FYI, we all do this. And the reason why, it's not evolutionarily efficient, energy efficient, 
to rethink everything we believe. We evolved to believe something and latch onto it and like link it to our identity even because that was just really, really effective when we had to make decisions like that grass is weird. Is that something that I want to eat or something that wants to eat me? And we had to make those snap decisions and that stuck with us. So anyway, let me go back. A bunch of other things came up here. Yeah, da, 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 da. Yikes. Pardon me, bunch. Um, oh my, this is um, uh, a lot of comments. My apologies. I'm going to get to them all, I promise. Um, yeah, oh my God, this is crazy. I'm scrolling back really, 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 really far. Um, oh man. Um, so, uh, okay, I, I made it. All right, I'm going to get to the end and then I'm going to say anything else. Um, so, and by the way, the other thing with support, okay, last thing about that. There were no other options. After about 1974, there were no other options. The footwear industry is a bunch of copycats. So once Nike started making padded, motion-controlled, elevated heel, arch-supporting shoes, and they started selling a bunch of them, that's what drives sales, is making things available. Then everyone copied that idea, and it's just become ubiquitous. In fact, here's the end of the story about why shoes look like this. 30 years later, a guy that I know, a guy that I designed the Speed Force with, was at a track meet with one of these doctors. And he said, you know, your idea has become ubiquitous. Every modern shoe is made with that idea. What do you think about that? The doctor said, it was the biggest mistake we ever made. We were making prosthetics for people who had injuries. We were seeing everything as a prosthetic, needing a prosthetic solution. We had no evidence for this Achilles shortening idea. We had no evidence that putting, an ele that putting a wedge of foam would be helpful. We had no evidence. We just made it up. And it's the worst, biggest mistake we ever made. Anyway, there's that. Okay, um, Elba Cosme. I've spent so much money on super cushion, stability, expensive shoes for my plantar fasciitis. I was and remained amazed that using your zero shoes has eliminated that. That's really sweet. Uh, Jack, interested in your ideas. Just curious. Oh, there you go. Um, uh, Willenda says, thank you for the info. I have way more info in my head than I ever imagined I would. And it's a pleasure to talk about it. Um, um Viranjit says, love my aqua blue HFS. Can you please make a leather driving shoe based on the HFS? Very interesting comment. Please go to, go to zeroshoes.com slash feedback. Leave that as a suggestion. And if you have samples, examples of a shoe that you think we should kind of model it on, what makes it a driving shoe, let me know. Let us know. We have a bunch of uh, professional drivers who wear our shoes and e-racers e who also wear our shoes, particularly the HFS. But let us know what you would want to see in that shoe. Mark says, hello from Ireland. Hi, Ireland. Hi, Mark. Um, live. I live in my trail sandals. Our chief uh, website developer is also in Ireland. He's in Dublin. Well, then the zero shoes are so comfortable. I've fallen asleep with them on still. You and me both. We hear that all the time. I love that one. Uh, let's see. Please, can we get a teaser as to upcoming autumn styles? No. <laughs> And normally I would do that. But the reason that I'm saying no is because I don't have them in front of me or with me. Normally I have samples here and I don't right now. And I literally don't remember what they are because we have so much going on here. Check this out. We're finishing the, de finishing the development for, for products for fall of 1920, of 19, <laughs> we're going to go back in time for fall of 1923, uh, for sprint, for <laughs> Jesus, for fall of 2023. So I have this fall product in my mind, our spring products on my mind, and next fall products on my mind. And I literally can't remember what goes when. So um, next time, when we do this again in July, uh, I'll, I'll try to be able to do things I'm not supposed to do, which is give away secrets. So, um, uh, and Viranjith says, hello from Canada. Hello back to you. Gabby, I live a 10 minute walk from the cloisters. It's great. Glad you enjoyed it. Oh my God, that's wonderful to hear. It really is divine. Uh, Anna says, just switched to zero barefoot shoes a few days ago after suffering for a few weeks with plantar fasciitis as a result of landscaping for weeks in my traditional running shoes. My feet are tired, but in a haven't used these muscles in years sort of way. Amazingly, the plantar fasciitis seems to be easing up and feeling much better. Happy with the switch. Thank you. Look, it's really simple. Smart podiatrists will tell you one way to treat plantar fasciitis, get out of your shoes, get on some like, um, not really unpleasant, but not really comfortable gravel and walk around on that. The reason is that if you're on gravel, you have to land with your foot underneath you and you have to engage the arch. In other words, you're putting your foot in a strong position first before you put it down on the ground. And that'll support the plantar fascia as, they, as it heals. So FYI. 
G force. My feet have had such a hard time being comfortable in any shoes. I've been uh, so many stores. I found these, ordered them. I was nervous that I bought backup shoes, but then when my zero shoes got here and within the first minute, I knew these were it and returned the backup shoes. Thank you so much. I love these. My feet have not tired or hurt at all. That is really very sweet to hear. Um, what I did with my old shoes, I sold them all on eBay. So FYI, uh, Dana, this is funny. I noticed that a contestant in the latest episode of survivor season 42, also wearing the Z trails. Oh man. Um, uh, is, is that the, is like latest episode. I'm going to have to find that. If you can like, uh, give me any sort of hint. Um, I'm going to have to track that down. That'd be a hoot. Drop me an email, send it to support at zero shoes.com. Um, with like when you saw that episode or something or who the contestant might've been, I got to find that out. That's brilliant. Um, how fast does the aqua cloud dry? Hiram asks. It depends on where you live here in Colorado, where the humidity is practically nothing, uh, really, really, really fast because there's not many parts that absorb any water to begin with. If you're living in New York, when I was there a month ago, when the humidity was 95%, whole lot longer. So I wish I could give you a really easy answer. But the simple thing I can say is you, we actually had someone uh, in the office today. He said, I went hiking over the weekend and I was on a trail that like went through water and then on rocks and dirt and everything. I'd step in the water, I'd step out and the water shot out of the shoes. And then they felt dry, you know, minutes later. But I can't tell you that um, because I don't know where you are, what you're doing, et cetera. Um, which is better for running, Speed Force or HFS and why? They're both great for running. It's really a question of how much barefoot feeling and how much uh, lightness you want. So I compete and train in the Speed Force because I want something really, really light, really, and really light is the biggest thing. Uh, and But otherwise, they're very, very similar. The Speed Force really has that glove-like feeling. And the Zelen, also very similar. I'm going to pull this, and I'll tell you about this shoe. Also, compared to the HFS, same sole, but this is a booty construction, so it's a little more of a, like a sock-like construction. Um, weighs a little bit more um, because of some of the materials. These are all, the upper is made with recycled materials. The sole is treated with a product that makes it more biodegradable in a landfill. So this is our green shoe, Zelen means green in Czech. Um, our European office is in the Czech Republic. That was the inspiration. So another great shoe. In fact, Chris McDougall, the guy who wrote Born to Run, has never promoted a shoe in the 13, 14 years that that book has been out, ever, until we gave him a pair of these. And if you look at his uh, Instagram, which is at Chris McDougall author, you will see him raving about these and then also raving about our Mesa trail. Uh, I talked to Chris the other day. I said, dude, I sent you a bunch of other shoes. What do you think of those? He goes, I'm loving these so much. I don't want to wear anything else. <laughs> I said, try on the other ones. So Chris, by the way, has Born to Run 2 coming out in December. So it's the practical application of Born to Run, how to actually make running fun and healthy and enjoyable. Um, and, the, the, and the book looks amazing. I can't wait for that. So really, they're both great shoes. Um, six of one, really personal preference. I wish, I wish it was simpler, a simpler answer, but it's personal preference. The right Zellin was tight on my right instep. I have a thick feet, but I retied them with bar lacing and now they feel good from Gabby. Cool. Send us a picture. That'd be really interesting to, to check that out. And um, good question from Matthew. She says, I love both. There we go. I should have read that first. Uh, Diane Mansfield, I'm never saying anything like that to any guy. If I ever find myself with anyone great ever, I wish I knew what you were talking about because I don't know what the hell I said. So <laughs> I don't, th these things come out of my face and then they're gone. FYI. Um, Michael, I have lower back pain for two to three months since switching to Prios. At first it was calves. Now calves are okay. Anyone have similar experiences? Possibly. Um, most times we hear the opposite. I have a broken spine and it's frankly, Thanks. To, well, I can't make medical claims, but all I can say is when you, and first of all, calf pain is optional. I'm going to put in something here about calf pain. So I'll say this, this may be relevant. Um, if you were having calf soreness at first, that could be from just doing, um, how do I want to put it? That could be from, oh yeah, yeah, I got a bunch of things that I got to go back to. That could be from, um, just using your calves too much, not relaxing enough. It could be something similar going on with your back. I'd have to see video of, how, of your gait, how you're landing, what you're doing to experiment with that. You might want to you might want to see if things feel different. If, for example, you're walking uphill, just a slight incline, not like a big hike, just a little incline. The reason is when you're walking uphill, it's harder, if not impossible, to overstride and heel strike and put force into your joints that could go up into your back. So see what that does. If you want to send video of how you walk or run or whatever you're doing, I'm happy to take a look at that too and give you some better, uh, better answer.
What are my thoughts on hiking with barefoot shoes? This is from Chili Billy. Is there any risk, um, et cetera? So first of all, we've had people who've hiked every major trail in the world, the Camino del Santiago. We have a friend who's doing it for the third time. Uh, she did it in the Prio. She did it in the Daylight Hiker. She did it in our Z Trail sandal. We've had people through hike the Appalachian Trail in the Genesis, in the Z Trail, in our Daylight Hiker, in our Excursion Fusion, in pretty much everything we make. We've had people on every trail. I'm in Boulder, Colorado. We see people on trails all day, every day in our shoes. So, um, so my thoughts are, it's awesome. Enjoy. There's no risk that a pointy rock will go through the sole. There's not, that's not a chance that a rock will penetrate a five to six millimeter sole. Not going to happen. If you're stepping on something pointy, you may feel it more than you like. Um, so the whole thing that happens when you're hiking in barefoot shoes is you start paying attention to where you're walking. So there's no promises that you'll never step on anything unpleasant. But the other thing that can happen, I can tell you, let me say this this way. When I first started going barefoot, the gravel around my driveway, I couldn't walk on it. It was actually more pointy rocks than gravels, bigger rocks. Um, within a number of months, I had no problem walking on that stuff. Not because I built up calluses, not because I became insensitive, the opposite. My foot became more flexible and I became more responsive. I didn't just plant my foot down and I was done with it. I was landing with my foot underneath me. And because I was landing properly, I could feel if there was something unpleasant and I'd step off of it more quickly. I don't have any evidence that my reflex arc improved because I wasn't thinking about that or measuring it. I wish I did. I have a hunch that it did. It feels like it did, but I'm not saying that it did or promising, of course. Um, let's see. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, Leo is responding to Michael before saying, my lower back pain got significantly less after switching to zero shoes within a week of wearing them. So what? it's not the shoes that are making the difference. I love to say it's not the footwear it's the form. It's just that footwear informs the form. When you have something like this, you tend to land on your heel, overstriding, and just really putting your foot down with a relatively straight leg, which the research shows put force right up into your joints, your ankle, your knee, your hip, your back, all the way up to your neck. When you're in something that doesn't let you do that, you make these gait adjustments that can be better. Chris replying to Michael, uh, could be new muscles that you're using in your back. Oh, good point. Uh, do you have a job that requires you to sit for long periods of time or do you have wear work boots, have to wear work boots? All interesting questions that may factor into what's going on. Um, I love when people chime in with their experience and ideas. So thank you all. Uh, this is coming from someone whose name I, oh, wait, hold on. What does that say? Something, something, the tree. Um, but I can't, partly because I'm not if I wear my glasses, I can only see, I can't see some things, uh, and if I don't wear them, I can't see other, <laughs> other things. So I can't read names uh, on this screen. I've been wearing mine for about two months. I wore cowboy boots for uh, for one day, and that night I had the worst foot pain I've had in a while. I had that with a shoe like this. I had to be somewhere where I uh, a while ago where I needed to wear dress shoes. And I hadn't worn shoes in years at that point. So I had a pair of all black shoes that looked kind of like this. I won't say the name, um, but they rhyme with blikey, blee, blikey, flee. And, um, and at the end of the day, my knees were killing me. Same thing. Uh, does the aqua cloud absorb water? Hiram asks. Well, let's see. Here's a pair. So the external part, um, it doesn't absorb water. The sock liner, the inside also shouldn't really absorb water. There's a tiny bit. This is a bit of fabric that may absorb a tiny bit. Inside that, there's a tiny bit of cushioning that can absorb some water, but it's designed not to. Uh, so there's little bits that can, but again, it's not, it's not, um, it's not like plastic. It's not like a plastic shoe that water just doesn't do anything to it. Um, but again, because it's so open, it, anything that does get wet dries really, really quickly. Uh, uh, Diane, I can't get anyone else who has plantar fasciitis to wear your shoes, even if I pay them. <laughs> so you're right. That's, I get it. That's the point about talking to people and telling them, uh, that they're wrong. You know, it's a funny thing. You tell someone I had this issue, I made this change and it went away and they will believe that they're, that you or they are a special little snowflake and whatever happened for you is irrelevant for them. I'll tell you what happens. Here's the way human beings work. Part two individuals, you can't say you're wrong because they will just tell you why you're full of it. But what happens over time as more and more individuals start discovering some new thing, it hits a critical mass point. And that's when the doubters go, all right, maybe I'll try it. And that's when things explode. And I would argue, contend, hope that we're approaching that point because we're now at almost a million, we've had over a million orders which was shocking when we heard that. We've been doing this 12 and a half years. And the growth of our company, it just continues to grow and is accelerating. And so I'm 
uh, hoping again uh, that we get to that point where the doubters go, oh, I'll give it a whirl and have the experience that many of you have described. What is the best way to clean shoes when they get stinky and nasty? Have a pair of 360s. We talked about this one a bit ago. Um, try soap and water by hand is the first step. Um, tossing them in a bag so they don't bounce around too much with other clothes, cold water, washing machine, let them air dry. Take the sock liner out because that's usually the part that's going to be, you know, that might get stinky. Um, if you feel like you need to replace that, you can give us a call. We can tell you how to do that. Uh, and those are my suggestions for doing with that. Which shoes would be best for playing pickleball, Carter asks. The 360, the one that was just mentioned. So where's one? Oh, so we designed the 360 for things like court sports, things with lateral motion, uh, parkour, CrossFit, et cetera. We've got a bunch of professional tennis players who are swearing by this shoe, a bunch of ninja warriors who wear this shoe, a bunch of pickleball players wearing the shoe. So this is the one that I would recommend, the 360. Okay, I'm moving. I'm getting towards the bottom. Um, let's see. Melissa replying to Diane. How to sell someone who thinks they need insoles for foot pain on something that doesn't need support from an insole. Yeah, once people have, again, we all do this. We have certain beliefs. We attach to them. Away we go. Uh, Marley, I use your shoes every day except at work because they need steel toes. Have I got any developments on the or further? Have I gotten any further on the steel toe shoe development? We've gotten further, but we're still not at a point where we're even testing it yet. There's again lots of moving parts on that pun intended or weird concept intended pun. You know what I mean? Um, so we're working on it. Um, it is a lot of development, actually, um, that you were talking about for moving forward for years. I'm assuming that's from Josh. Wait, I'm missing. I can't uh, use your, hold on, getting there, getting there, getting there. Um, uh, Viranji says, I just traveled to Italy. I was on the lookout for zero shoes. I found five travelers in zeros. Oh, that's great. We had, uh, Lena was having lunch with a, a friend that we haven't seen in years. And she was in REI the day before. And while she was checking out with a pair of zero shoes, the person in front of her had a pair of zero shoes he was checking out with and wearing a pair. And like four, the other four or five people in line said, what are those? And he goes, what are those? First of all, they're back there. And then he spent 10 minutes talking to them about how great they were. So that was really fun. I love it though. I'll tell you what I'm waiting for. Here's my biggest fantasy. It, it, you may not know about this. On Craigslist, they had a thing called, they may still have it, I haven't looked, a thing called missed connections. So you bumped into someone, but you never got their number. And so you posted on Craigslist in the missed connection section, hoping they would see that and then you'd connect. Years ago, somebody posted a missed connection that said, we were on a bus, you were wearing your zero shoes. I didn't have mine on. So I was too embarrassed to say hello. I hope you see this. I was the guy with the backpack and whatever else. My fantasy is two people will meet because they're wearing zero shoes and get married. So that's the one I'm waiting for. <laughs> uh, Jack, I feel like I'm being convinced, but in my mind, I wonder if I couldn't get a similar benefit if I buy more basic shoe at the shoe store. That way I'd be picking from more familiar styles. The simple answer is no. <laughs> and again, I hate to do this, but here's why. First of all, you're not going to find a simple thing from, from, a, from another company with a wider foot-shaped toe box. The wide thing is important because you can't build strength in your foot if you can't use, especially that longitudinal arch, this is the arch that we think about, the one on our instep. If you can't use your big toe, you can't build strength in the arch. It weakens the arch. The second thing, every shoe that you're going to find has a bunch of cushioning. The cushioning is going to, first of all, you won't be able to find one. Um, actually, wait, I'll tell you this. I'll, tell, I'll say the story this way. Um, Phil Ma Dr. Phil Maffetone, one of the world's leading experts on performance endurance running, in the 80s, wrote a book, uh, wrote a number of books. And I remember reading it in the 80s. And I, in fact, when I became friendly with Phil, I said, those books you were reading in the 80s were all about this. Do you feel that now, 20, 30 years later, you're vindicated or upset that it took people so long to get hit to the program? He goes, that one. <laughs> so he would recommend go to Walmart, find the cheapest shoe you can find because it'll typically be flat. It'll typically not have much of any cushioning. It typically won't have arch support, but it'll still not have this. And it still won't have this, and it'll and won't have our five thousand sole warranty, mile sole warranty. It won't have the grip. So you could try, but I'll, I'll say I'll say this: Dr. Irene Davis, when she was at Harvard, her research showed that many of the minimalist shoes sold by bigger companies were not minimalist enough. In other words, they typically had too much cushioning, so you couldn't get that feedback that you needed to make the gait change. Again, it's about form, not footwear, to make that natural gait change to a more natural pattern. And what she showed is that those 
minimalist shoes, she calls them partial minimalist shoes, were worse for you than anything you could otherwise try. Because again, not enough cushioning. So you didn't get the feedback. So you're still running as if you were in something like this. But when you do that in a shoe that is not giving you other those other qualities, it can be even worse for you. So I would, and by the way, I would contend that if you bought one of those more basic shoes from, you know, a familiar brand, the net cost will not be lower than buying one of ours. 5,000 mile sole warranty. Most of these, you got to replace them in two to 500 miles. The less expensive shoes, the even cheaper ones, often even quicker. So the net cost, why is that air quotes? The net cost, uh, what it really costs to own a shoe can be much, much lower, even in something that is more expensive. Cost more, less expensive, cost less, more expensive, cost less. Get what I'm trying to say? So that's what I would say. But the biggest thing you're going to find is the comfort factor and the value of this, and then this, and then this, and then anything else. And FYI, if you do need an orthotic for some reason, this is the best platform to put one in because there's nothing getting in the way of it. There's not some already built-in arch support and curved heel and all this other stuff that interferes with the orthotic. And as the foam in the shoe breaks down, that changes the way the orthotic can work. So if you're going to put one in, this is the best platform because it's flat and doesn't get in the way and lasts longer flat. I saw a guy... This is going to tell you the difference between Facebook and Facebook users and Instagram users. So a few years ago, I was at the airport and there's a guy in front of me in shoes that were even thicker than these. And he had worn out the inside uh, foam somehow so much that his feet were like this. And I pulled up my camera and took a video from like the knees down as he's walking in front of me with his feet like this. So I posted this video on Facebook and on Instagram. On Facebook, a whole bunch of people were going, oh my God, shoes are horrible for you. You should be wearing something like zero shoes. On Instagram, people said, stop, stop body shaming people. It's like, I was shoe shaming somebody. I never said anything about this guy's body. I was saying his shoes are problematic. That's the difference. So, all right. Anyway, um, Diane, when he wears those out, he'll try another pair. Um, oh, cool. Um, that was my comment. Diane, again, your ex-fiance gave you away to your current wife, you fool. Uh, you know, I got to tell you, Boulder's a small town and there's a bunch of insular communities. And there was times where Lane and I would be at a party where people at that party were like four of her ex-boyfriends, people whom I knew, people who I had met independently of her, people who I liked. And every time I see one of her exes, all I can think of is, <laughs> you're a moron. You let this one go? Um, so I am really lucky that they were not better guys and, or a better fit or whatever the hell it is. But anyway, uh, no, my ex fiance is totally happy that she gave me away because she got her wish. She ended up marrying someone with way more money than I will ever have in my life. And that's what she was looking for. So <laughs> that was a horrible thing to say. And true. Uh, Melissa says, I have wedge a wedge compression factor in my T12 vertebrae in my middle back and barefoot shoes cause no pain as opposed to regular shoes. So again, you know, this is back to the previous thing. My contention is that that's really going to be a gate thing about how you're hitting the ground and how that force is being transferred up your body. Uh, aren't they using the Mesa Trail for hiking? Yes, there are many people using the Mesa Trail for hiking and the TerraFlex for hiking and the Daylight Hiker and the Excursion Fusion and the, I mean, when we built, when we made our first closed toe shoe, which is this one, the Hana, <laughs> this is a casual canvas shoe. Within a week, within a week of selling that shoe, we had people emailing saying, hey, I just hiked up Kilimanjaro in this. It's like, what the, it's not a hike, eh, whatever. So, <laughs> so that was really entertaining. People have done, people have done everything in every shoe we make, uh, way off label, things that we never imagined. So that was really fun. Josh, can I ask which of your running active shoes is the widest? They're all basically similar. The, um, the only difference is, oh, how to describe it? Um, the materials. So with the Speed Force, the material is a little stretchier. With the Zelen, uh, even stretchier. So I would say if the Prio feels a little narrow for you, this might feel wider uh, just because of the way the material works. And for the other shoes like the Aptos, a canvas shoe or a leather shoe, does those materials stretch? That might be helpful as well. And undeniably, um, even with something like the Prio, which is mostly like sewn and welded, that does stretch over time. You may be able to find someone who can help you with that a little bit. So, but they're all fundamentally uh, made similarly. <laughs> you, you need zero glasses, Diane says. Um, yes, and unfortunately, I don't qualify for contacts. But yeah, um, and I got these are. Hold on, here. I'm going to put them on. 
and I'll see if I can function. Holy crap. All right. So these are uh, progressives. And so this is what I don't like to read things. I got to do that. I don't like doing that. That's kind of a hassle. This distance is usually okay, but the fonts on here are hard to read. Matthew, um, I have, uh, I have, you're my friends. Um, uh, and co oh, I, oh, I have told, I bet you meant to say told. Uh, uh, my friends or something and coworkers about zero shoes and rolled up my shoe in front of them. <laughs> zero shoes are awesome. Uh, may Yahweh bless you and keep you from numbers 624 to 36. Well, I thank you very much. I'm always happy to have a blessing. Uh, the aqua cloud sandals, not the shoe. Oh, thank you, Hiram. Sorry. Those things don't absorb water. So hope, and they float. So hopefully that's helpful. Well, Linda, a special little snowflake. Um, you know, come on. Um, higher, uh, no big deal. Again, I can't keep track of these things. So my, my apologies. I only tried zero shoes because the Mika matched my burgundy coat. Diane says, <laughs> oh man, I love it. Um, hey, whatever gets you in, that's all we care about. And I like the 360, but I want them in the darker blue and those don't come in my size. I wear seven and a half for women. Gabby, um, contact our customer happiness team and see if, you know, one came back for a size exchange or if there's one floating around. Just email support at zeroshoes.com or give them a call is even better and see if maybe they can find you one because uh, you never know. Laura, love your shoes. Thanks for the sale. Two discounted pairs arrived yesterday. That was from our zeroshoes.eu warehouse clearance sale. Our warehouse isn't big enough and we have new fall products coming in. We didn't know how things were going to go with the EU. The answer is really well, but we got new stuff coming in. We got to move things out. So that's that. Um, Jody says, maybe it happened, but I have no idea what you're referring to, Jody, because again, by the time that comment came in, I, that thought was long gone. Uh, safety toe, Chad asks. Um, again, we're working on that. Throw in your recommendations. There's a lot of, we had a big um, live uh, phone a Zoom event for people about safety toe shoes, asking what features they wanted. Do they want a high top, a low top? I just went like this, high top, low top. A high top, a low top, what are the features they needed? And there was a lot of divergence on that. So go to zeroshoes.com slash feedback, Chad, and leave the specific requirements that you're looking for in a safety toe shoe. Elizabeth, how do I feel about wearing zero uh, wearing socks in zero shoes? Should we or should we not? Or any tips? Definitely wear socks with tips. Um, so I don't have an opinion. It's a personal preference. I don't, and I'll tell you why. I'm lazy. The effort that it takes to put on socks not going to do it. So, uh, which is a shame actually, because I mean, if I don't need to, I'm not going to. And it's a shame because when I did wear shoes where I did need socks, I had a great collection of tie dye socks. You know, the best thing about tie dye socks, they all match. <laughs> you don't have to pick out matching ones. So total personal preference, a tip or recommendation though, if you're going to wear a sock with a zero shoe, get the thinnest one you can get away with. You don't want to add more padding, reduce the amount of feeling that you're getting. So, um, and it can change the fit too. So if you need them, um, so like for our hiking boots, if you're out somewhere and you need something for extra warmth or whatever, fine, but basically go as thin as you can get away with. Merino wool is really good for thin and really um, moisture absorbent and odor absorbent. Um, I don't have a specific recommendation because I'm, I'm not wearing them. Our customer happiness team may because they may have heard from other people. So drop them an email. Maybe they'll have an answer for you. Melissa replying to Elizabeth, um, I do when it's cold, when it's hot, I don't. There you go. Um, Chad also wanted to say I've been using the 360 in my CrossFit gym and it's been great. It's freedom for my whole foot. Uh, I would hope for both feet, but unless you only have one and then freedom for your whole foot is good enough for me. Gabby, HF has the women's side eight fit really nicely to think the men's uh, six and a half would be fit or then be too big. That should be really similar because that's the conversion one and a half. Um, they're going to be a little wider. So, um, but the best thing I can say is buy them and see free exchanges if we're wrong, as you may know. Michael, I'm an enormous fan and own 12 pairs of zero shoes. Wondering if there'll be a vegan leather Austin in the future and more Aptos colors for men's Aptos. We're redoing the Aptos. There's going to be other colors. The problem with the vegan leather stuff and I'm using air quotes is right now they're all horrible. And, uh, some of them are like really plastic. And the irony is while they may not be using leather, which by the way, cows are not harvested for leather. Leather is a byproduct that if it wasn't used for other products, would just be burned and thrown away. Nonetheless, I'm very sensitive to the whole idea. We try to make vegan products whenever possible. The, the fake leathers uh, are either not applicable for footwear. So there's like, a, there's a what are they, uh, what's the one? pineapple leather it says don't use it for, for wear. There's a mushroom leather. They've only made like a couple meters of it. It's too expensive. Um, and also doesn't really work for footwear. The mostly, most of the th things that people think of as vegan leather are made with plastics built into them. 
the environmental impact of the plastic is probably way worse than anything you would think of dealing with, you know, vegan, non-vegan. I know that's not a good uh, argument about veganism or non-veganism, but just FYI, we, um, I've been looking at this for 12 years. Uh, our product team combined has, wait, 40, over 200 years of experience. We're always looking at new materials. There's two trade shows we go to every year where it's all about new materials. People come to our office almost every month showing us new materials. There just aren't any really good options at the moment, um, despite what some people may say. So especially for something where you want that barefoot feel, that natural motion. So some of them, they just feel like plastic and they break like plastic. Um, it's challenging. Some of the the uh, green products, by the way, like there, uh, I'm not going to mention them by name, but there's a number where they say that it's, you know, really green because it's made from fill in the blank. What I found most of the time is that the, what it takes to collect and process and use that material is often worse for the environment than doing something synthetic. There's a great Harvard Business Review article called The Myth of Sustainability really eye-opening that a lot of people are using sustainable stories as marketing, but they can't back them up. We, we made the Zelen with recycled materials, re, um, enhanced biodegradability. And I am the first one to say, if we find out that these are not uh, net positive beneficial for the environment, we'll stop talking about it as a green shoe. We're all about no greenwashing. We're only going to tell the truth. Our goal is uh, use less material, make things last longer and always be on the lookout for what we can do better. So anyway, so unfortunately there's just not a great leather option, uh, vegan leather option at the moment. Inga, a friend of mine who was seeing a podiatrist told me the podiatrist told him that if it didn't matter how good the shoes, uh, uh how good, uh, the shoes, uh, you bought, they had to be replaced every six months <laughs> Not true of zero shoes. Well, you know, actually it's even worse. Uh, it's been shown the more expensive the shoe, the worse it can be for you. The faster it'll wear out and often the materials, the things they use in there to make it more expensive are bad for you. So more expensive shoes are not better than less expensive shoes. And, um, and yeah, when there's not, you know, a bunch of foam to wear out, what's he talking about? We had someone, our first customer service manager, in fact, our first, em wait, first employee, second employee. First was a guy who was handling all the shipping. He was doing that out of our living room. Second was a guy to do customer service. He was in the dining room <laughs> right next door. Um, and, uh, uh, he ran in our four millimeter sandals, then a do it yourself kit. He ran 150 miles a week on a slow week. And he wore those sandals for three years. You can do the math. So that was really fun. Renzo, I swear by the wide toe box and flat design. It's great. I can't believe folks spending money on Yeezys when zero shoes exist. I'll be buying my second pair this year. The leather Prio. Thank you, Diane. I've got to get uh, multifocal contacts. I feel your pain. Yeah. I, I don't even qualify for them because my prescription is not stable enough. Uh, Josh, uh, perfect. Cheers, Steven. Um, I'm here. Uh, oh, 1am here. So I'm off to bed. Thanks for being awesome. Well, that's very sweet. Get some sleep, something I haven't done in years. Um, and then Sarah says, hi, Mr. Sashin. Hello, back at you. This is live. Diane, this is uh, the new old man challenge. What was I talking about when you commented on this? Oh, man, I'm failing that challenge. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, replying to Joe to your fantasy of a couple meetings. Zero shoes. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, and I don't know who that is pretending to be us, but that was good. Could have been Jody. Sarah, zero shoes are the best. Keep up doing what keep doing what you do. Trust me, we're just doing more of what we do. We have so many exciting new products coming out over the next year and a half. That's about as far as we actually. We've already started talking about spring of twenty four. Um, we got a lot going on. It's very exciting. Uh, Stuart Greenberg, hi Stu. I like socks in my Prios, but prefer no socks with the Aptos. There you go. Uh, Gabby, I love Bilenka socks, which are made for barefoot shoes. Uh, they're super thin. also like very thin and gingy performance toe socks. There are some great suggestions. Any progress on dating apps for zero shoes? Uh, zero shoes where it's cult following. Um, I, you want to hear something funny? I was working on one. I was trying to work on something for people who say that one foot is bigger than the other, which by the way, most of the time it's so small that it doesn't make a difference, but like had, you know, significantly bigger. I wanted to make a dating app where we would hook you up with someone who's the other way around and then you would split two pairs of shoes. But the logistics on that were a nightmare because you had to do it when you found a partner. We couldn't just sell you this and then hope to find this. 
because uh, our, fa- our warehouse workers would shoot me in the head because we would need three times the warehouse space to handle all the waiting, you know, for a single shoe and that. So it was a nightmare. So, but something that I worked on. Um, die and I eat plenty of plastic. Uh, Sarah Zero Shoes could get more into clothing. So should. So it's on our to-do list, but I will tell you, the fastest way to go bankrupt in this industry is to suddenly go into clothing because you, first of all, you need something unique and special and uh, apparel is really, really hard to manage, harder to manage the supply chain of on apparel than anything else. The, the inventory quantities you need, the number of SKUs to be get somewhat technical, it's a nightmare. So on our to-do list, but only when it's really the right kind of product at the right time. FYI. Uh, well, Linda, thanks for looking at options. Please continue having leather options. I love the Leather Phoenix. So we started making leather shoes because of things like this. Excuse me, hiccups. And that was um, a taco from Rusty Tacos. It was good to taste that again. It's a weird thing to say, but as you may have gathered, I have no editing abilities. Um, so we had people who were saying, I, I work at a law firm. I do the, or I work somewhere where I need uh, protection from like a leather shoe because I can't have things absorbed into the upper of this shoe. That's how we started doing it. There was some confusion and upset at the time because there were a number of people who thought we we're a vegan company, not a natural movement company who happen to make as many vegan products as possible. So when it's appropriate is when we do leather products and when it's not, we happily don't. So there's that. Uh, Michael, yikes, plastic. I didn't know that. Thanks for the reply. It's, it's really, really crazy. There was another article that came out Oh, there's a thing called the HIG index, H-I-G-G. And this is in the New York Times within, a, within the last week. And the HIG index is designed so that companies can say, here's how environmentally friendly we are. And guess what the New York Times reported? It's complete bullshit. I've been saying this for years without doing as much research as they did because it was screamingly obvious to me. But here's what's going on. <laughs> Again, I can't edit, so here we go. There's a bunch of people who are really, really concerned about environmentally friendly products. They're called rich white people. I'm not trying to criticize any of us. I'm very concerned about the environment. But the ones who, but what's happening is companies are hearing that people are saying they want to buy environmentally sustainable products. And um, if you have a bunch of money, there the, that's being proven to be true. Most people don't know, don't care. So because there was this idea, this demand, well in advance of materials being able to support this. Then people started coming up with these ways of doing, again, what's called greenwashing, of saying they're being good for the environment when they're not, of saying these products are helpful when they're not. It's reprehensible. I was on a panel discussion at a um, trade show in Germany, and I said, until these products have been vetted fully and until everybody can use them, not just products that become more expensive as a result, until no one can use it for marketing value, it's all hand-waving. We've got to get to, now it's fine. The argument is that, you know, people are trying and that's going to help when there's more demand, have people uh, find ways to make it less expensive. It's true, but to say that it's valuable in advance of being valuable, that's the problem that I've got. So we're all anti-greenwashing, all doing what's best as much as we can. CZ, love my ass. We go sad to see we aren't selling them anymore. Plans to re-release them. Yes, in a new and improved version. One love 714, can you... Hook it up with a discount. Uh, uh, will there be any soon? We don't do discounting very often uh, because we are already a lower price product compared to the other barefoot slash minimalist products, most of them. Uh, and we last longer with our 5,000 mile sole warranty and we have more things. So we try to avoid it because another reason, quite simply, we're growing so quickly that if we don't make money, we don't have enough money to buy products for the next year and satisfy what people are looking for. It's a real challenge. I know that sounds crazy, but it's a real thing. So, um, so, 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 um, when we launch new products, we typically have a sale. So we have fall products coming out. I don't know when they're going to land because of the supply chain and logistics problems, but then we'll have a sale on those new products. We may have something happening between now and then for some special situation, like I mentioned. And then uh, I will let you know at the end of the year for our holiday sale, which is also our anniversary. We call it the Black Cyber Thanks Kwanzaa Sataversary and Warehouse Clearance Sale because it's all of those things. And uh, that's when we'll, you know, when we have things that we're discontinuing because we're bringing in new style, new colors, for example, or some, you know, sizes that just haven't moved or whatever, we do that. But otherwise, um, we, we really believe in the value of what we're doing. And we hope that you do too. 
Could you make a Zero Shoes work boot? Again, um, that's come up a number of times. And you can go to zeroshoes.com slash feedback to leave your suggestions about what you need in a protective toe waterproof work boot. One love, completely trashed my Prios. I need an upgrade. Always, uh, I always, I'm happy to hear that. There was a brief feel, the burn app, dating app. I know that was hysterical. Uh, that was from Diane. Sarah, yes, I understand what you're saying, Mr. Sashin. It's complicated. I hope that what I was saying was complicated or what I was talking about, probably the eco thing because that's complicated. Um, but yeah, it is crazy. Um, it will have to feel like you're naked. Diane, I have no idea what you're talking about, but hey, I'm all for naked. Um, CZ, I use hick hickeys? hickeys as laces in my Oswegos, makes them much nicer as slip-ons. I don't know what hickeys are, but put a link in there so you can show people that. That'd be cool. And if they're like elastic laces, we have um, we sell lock laces on our website that uh, are elastic. They can be cool that way too. Um, my, Gary says, uh, my Gary says, based. Uh, sorry again for not being able to track back far enough to know what you were referring to. Wait, hold on. I'm going to try and do that. Could you make zero shoes? Uh, sorry, I can't track that thought. Um, do, 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 do I drink coffee without a filter too? <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, that's funny. I don't drink coffee at all. Uh, James says, none of my sizes are in stock. Um, a, sorry, what size are you? And what shoe are you looking at? Because we have, we shouldn't be out of a size in every shoe. Um, but if you're out of stock in a size of a particular shoe, then um, again, check with our customer happiness team. See if any came back in the, uh, from exchanges or something. Tyler, any steel toe shoes planned? Yes, they're planned. I hope you heard the previous comments about that. Um, we need to support ourselves. I don't need to apologize. You're right. That's what I kind of realized at the end of that thought. And it's not supporting us. It's supporting all of you and all the people that we want to have this experience. And it, you know, it's a, it's a thing that people who haven't run businesses don't really get very often, but the hardest thing to manage in business is the kind of growth that we're experiencing. And I'll tell you something funny. We had a conversation with um, one of our investors earlier today where they were saying, you know, it's going to be hard to keep growing at the rate you've been growing. I said, people have been telling us that for the last eight years, and we've continued to grow at that same rate every year or better. And, we're, and we haven't even hit our stride yet. I said, we haven't even gotten to the point where people really get the hint that this is a good idea. And then that growth rate is going to accelerate by a factor of God knows how much. If we have, if we have some, the right super famous person start saying, oh my God, you got to wear these, guess what? So um, no, I'm not actually apologetic about it, but uh, thank you for giving me that, um, that cue to really explain it with the way it is. So I appreciate that. Um, have we thought about making slippers, shoes around the house? Okay, Jeff, because you said that question before someone asked, well, can I give any secrets about what's coming out in the future? Something like that. So there's that. You pay taxes, right? Amazon doesn't. They don't apologize ever. <laughs> oh, man. And we do pay taxes. Uh, that was painful the first time we had a big tax bill. Huge tax bill. Do we have boots that are first responder friendly? Um, it depends on what you need, Abby. And so uh, you can toss that in and I can tell you, or you can drop an email to our customer happiness team and they will give you an answer. I can tell you that the, oh, I don't have one up here. Um, the Excursion Fusion is our fully waterproof hiking boot that maybe that may work. Depends, you know, and I found actually depends on where you are. First responders in different states and different locales have different requirements. In some places, the requirement is a leather shoe. Here in Boulder, Colorado, it's not. So it depends on what you need. So drop an email uh, to our customer happiness team, support at zeroshoes.com, or go to zeroshoes.com slash feedback and let us know what you're looking for, and we'll see what we can do. Uh, oh, clothing. I said clothing. That's why I said it would have to feel like you're naked. You are absolutely correct. Abby, what kind of shoes are the ones on the bottom left? Left shoulder? This? I'm hoping that's the one you're talking about because that's my left shoulder. That is the Priya. Oh, sorry, that's the 360. Hold on. That's the 360. Our cross training, cross fit, court sport, lateral protection, rope, rope climbing protection, super califragic expialidocious shoe. This shoe is awesome, by the way. Uh, and if you meant um, my other left shoulder, uh, that is the Ashland. This is our super fun women's casual boot. And then that over there is the Daylight Hiker. And that is the Mika. So uh, I just covered both bases. And then let's see. Um, Laura, what I'd really love is a water-resistant running shoe with an anti-slip sole like the Prio. So what you're really talking about is something like the Aqua X Sport, but with like a running sole, really, or a waterproof version of something like 
this or, uh, or like the Mesa Trail, uh, all I can say is um, you have rubbed the genie's lamp. I just can't tell you when they're going to come out because I don't remember. <laughs> So, but we're, but we're working on both of those slip resistant, by the way, is a whole different story. Um, we do make a slip resistant Prio that's way up there. That's the leather Prio. That's the Prio all day slip resistant. So the challenge with uh, slip resistant for running is if it's really, first of all, what makes you slip is less about the soul than it is about physics. If you put your foot down in front of you at an angle, you're putting force at an angle, that's going to be slippery. If you are putting your foot more underneath you, which is proper running form, then you're not. There's a video we have on our website. I can't remember where it is. Um, uh, I'll have to look, look it up. Wait, I'll look it up. Uh, hold on. Uh, zero. Oops. Hold on. I'm going to do this. Of people running on ice. So site, zero shoes. Give me one sec. I'm going to do this. Ice. And so this is a really, really interesting thing about slip resistance. And I found the post, so I'm going to put it in the chat as soon as I can do that. Um, this was actually inspired by watching robots run because the robots have like great running form. And, um, and then you'll see videos of people running on ice. So if you can run full speed on ice, it's not about the shoes that's making things slip resistant. FYI. Um, right shoulder. Ah, I did them both. So um, I'm scrolling back up. Ay, yay, 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 yay. Sorry. There's a whole bunch of... Um, Comments. Uh, CZ, I play pickleball with my 360s. Love it. Get some interesting comments. Cool. Uh, Austin says HFS and all white. Tricky for the HFS, but but do me a favor. Go to zeroshoes.com slash feedback and leave that one because we've had a lot of requests for all white shoes. I've been screaming, not really, at our product team about that for years and they have been resistant until now. And so, uh, but let them know what you're looking for would be really, really helpful. Uh, Diane, he wears a six and a half left, eight and three quarters right. Yeah, well, that's definitely, you got to find the right partner for that one. You got to find someone who's the other way around and then we can talk. What do I recommend on how to clean the shoes? Uh, again, this is, um, put them in a bag so they don't bounce around too much. Put them in with a bunch of other clothes, cold water, air dry. Um, hand washing is best if you can do it, but that's the way you can use a machine. Any affiliation with the knees over toes guy, Ben Patrick, only that I reached out to Ben months ago and said, I'd love to have you try our shoes. And he hasn't worn anything else since. So Ben and I have been trying to do some things. We we're going to get together and do some video. Um, I'm going to wait. Oh, wait, where's my phone? I'm going to show off since you know, uh, that's from, are you okay? Since you know, Ben or know what Ben does, by the way, Ben Patrick, the knees over toes guy has this awesome, awesome program for, for protecting your knees, for building strength. Basically it's a lot of body weight based exercises for building strength around your knees. It's a great program. Um, I did it for many months and, um, and wait, I'm, I'm getting there. And one of the exercises, um, is called the Nordic hamstring curl. And if you are one of those people who knows what that is, I'm going to do something really crazy if I can find what I'm looking for. Why? Oh, there we go. Favorites. Okay. This is what the hell? That's not a favorite. Why, why is that in my list of favorites? Those are not my favorites at all. Um, okay. Come on. Come on. This is crazy. Where are my favorites? My phone. Oh, there's, there we go. Okay. Here we go. Uh, so this is for those of you who know what the Nordic hamstring curl is. Here we go. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Stay on target. All right. That's happened because of Ben. So, um, and actually I can do it with less hip bend now, but anyway, really, really good exercise for runners, uh, FYI. And, um, and yeah, so we are really, really grateful for all of Ben's support as he's been wearing our shoes. Uh, and other people that are also really cool, like Tony Horton, the P90X guy, same thing with Tony and uh, I'm forgetting Nick Nilsson, the mad scientist of muscle. Um, there's a bunch. We've been really grateful for all the people who've been supporting us. Holy crap. I'm getting to the end. Of, uh, no, I'm not. Um, Diane, what's funny is a slogan. Uh, oh, you can, yeah, I like the idea. Um, what is a snake who isn't wearing any clothing? Snaked. Uh, I'm going to pretend you didn't do that. Um, Barbara, what do you have in sandals? Um, well, I've only got it here. There's a couple of them that I'm that I have here. But the best thing to do is go to zeroshoes.com/store and you will see all of our sandals. Um, and right shoulder, I did both right and left. Oh, and this right shoulder, right on my right shoulder. That's the Aptos right there. little slip on. Gabby, when are the Kelso coming back in more colors? I don't have a date. Uh, we, they're in production, but I'm not sure what's happening with those. So they sold out like that. Uh, and But we got more. Uh, Abby says, thanks for answering. That's what I'm here for. Laura says, thumbs up. 
Okay. Jeff says, I've got the Hana, but can't find the laces to match on your website. Huh. Um, yeah, they're not on the website. Contact our customer happiness team and they will help you out because I don't have a clue what the story is with that. So my apologies that that's not something really obvious and easy to do. Um, so yeah, check with them, support at zero issues.com or give them a call. Isaiah, thanks for doing a live stream. Super fun. I, look, I, I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it too. I'm having a blast. I hope that's kind of obvious. And Gabby, what's to come in your amazing movement movement podcast, more weekly episodes. We got a couple going on a couple. I, I had a great one. I did one. So my friend Golden Harper, who started ultra shoes, we had an amazingly wonderful chat about what it's like to start and, and why you would start in uh, a shoe company. Horrible thing to do. And I mean, it's, a, it's crazy. It's very, very difficult. And uh, so we were commiserating and just telling the story of how he did his. And then I clicked save and the file disappeared. And then he went on vacation. So we're working on that. I've got a couple of rants that I'm looking to do too. I just haven't had time to do it. So there's definitely more coming. Um, and we, we, just, we just said yes to like five other people that I'm looking forward to chatting with. Um, but again, I just sadly don't have dates. We've been, I've been doing it for like two and a half years, maybe almost three. No, no longer. Almost three years. So there's a lot of episodes. I had no idea. Um, somebody whose name I can't read because of the font. Um, order about 10 pairs for myself and for my girlfriend uh, in, in the EU. Not sure about sizing. Well, we can do free exchanges. So that hopefully we'll get it right. And if not, we'll deal with it. Does it have Vanilla Ice playing in the background? Uh, no. Um, and if you haven't seen Vanilla Ice saying, uh, well, mine goes dun 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 It's one of the funniest things ever. The guy who said you're all out of his size. Oh, his left foot is six and a half, right eight and three quarters. My, um, are those your wife's favorites on your phone? No, they're my favorites. There's like two different favorites folders. Very confusing. From the sustainability, look, I'm almost at the end. From a sustainability perspective, I love trail running a six millimeter DIY, but once the tread wears out, there's not enough grip for steep downhills. Soul's good, just not enough grip. Uh, any ideas other than new ones? Um, you could not really, you could try scoring them a little bit, maybe um, because like siping is a thing that gives grip in water, but I don't know if that would work on trails. I don't know if they're, look, if it's in, if it's uh, uh, in under 5,000 miles, then that's covered by our 5,000 mile sole warranty. Contact our customer happiness team for, for the 5,000 mile sole warranty deal. And thank you, Diane, for the free slogan. You get what you pay for. Um, uh, what is the best way to walk in barefoot shoes? I heel strike, and after a 12-hour day, my heels are a bit sore. Yeah, don't do that. So the, here's the thing. If you're using – here, here's the best answer. Take off your shoes. Start playing around. Walk just a little bit barefoot, barefoot, ideally on a surface that's not, not grass, something like a street or a sidewalk or a bike path, and get used to what it's like to start you know, getting your foot underneath you and uh, not putting all that force on your heel. And um, that's really the thing to do is because the way your gait changes, the way, you, the way you move when you walk changes is all about feedback. It's all about getting your brain to hear what's happening with your body. And if it's something unpleasant, it will find a way to help you do something better. So that's my simplest recommendation. Um, and let's see. Um, half, Diane says half of these comments are me explaining my comments. I think it's probably about three quarters, but that's cool. We're having a good time. So, um, so, so, and there's also, if you go, that's from Are You Okay? If you go to uh, zeroshoes.com, in the, there's a learn more section in the navigation. Click on that and you'll see one of the links is how to walk the natural way or something like that. So there'll be some other tips there about walking. Uh, Sheer C29, had a great experience with your customer service here in Australia with some issues in my 360s. Thanks again. My pleasure. And thank you. Like tiptoeing. Nope, it's not tiptoeing. It's just not landing hard with your heel out in front of you. The way you're going to land is going to be, uh, have to do with whether you're walking fast or slow, accelerating or decelerating uphill or downhill or on a flat. So there's not one way to do it. I, when I'm walking, you know, if, if you land with your foot not too far out in front of you, you can kind of roll across your heel. You can also land sort of flat footed. You can also land forefoot and come down in your heel. It, it all depends on how fast, again, how fast, how slow, accelerating, decelerating, uphill, downhill, flat. But the key thing is really getting your foot underneath you as much as you can and using your glutes and hamstrings as the prime movers rather than putting your foot out in front of you and trying to you know, effectively pole vault over your foot to get there. When is the Veracruz coming back? That's a great question, by the way. I skipped a couple, so I'll come back. 
Um, I don't know. That shoe worked great for many people and not great for enough people that we went, uh, we got to figure out a new way to do this. And we're working on that. Um, yikes, got to back up. A bunch of people came in. Yikes. Yeah, da, 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 da. Uh, any more styles coming in the winter line, fall line? Jeremiah asked, yes. Um, we'll be announcing those. Usually we try to do this in August, uh, but because of supply chain and logistics problems, we don't know when that's happening yet. Hopefully we'll know soon. A bunch of things that I'm in love with, frankly. Uh, I had some problems also. One Love 714 says, my calf was super tight and had to do some stretching. Take a look at that um, link that I posted before about calf soreness being optional. Hopefully there's something helpful in there. Uh, that's again, the Veracruz coming back. You asked, um, oh, and by the way, you are, are your cases. Um, I have to practice love my prios though. Good. Um, Stretching is always a good thing. Foam rolling can be helpful. I could do a medley of songs with walk and tiptoe in the titles. Oh, there's many things we could do. Uh, true story says small steps help about not uh, uh, landing too hard on your heel. Also true. You know what? Um, it's not about small steps if you're using your, think about skating. If any of you have ever ice skated, you put your foot down and you push back. That's what moves you forward. You keep that other foot underneath you. It's really, that's how we should be walking too. When our, the foot that's planted on the ground is pushing and moving you forward and the front leg doesn't have to do much, if anything. So uh, if you, and that's in that article that I mentioned about how to, uh, if you go to the learn more section about walking. And, and so if you do that, your steps can be just as long as if you're pole vaulting over your front foot. It's just that it's more natural. So there's that. Um, do not give any medical advice, but have experiences with crunching like pain underneath the arch in a foot. Any ideas on a non, from a non-doctor a non not pretending to play one on TV? Um, I'd need way more information than that is the simplest thing I can say. And we're not gonna be able to do it on this call. Um, so no, but I can also point you to some medical advice people. So if you reach out to... Uh, drop our customer happiness team an email, support at zeroshoes.com. Tell them to forward the email to me so I can refer you to a couple of medical people. Let me know where you are. So um, barefoot friendly podiatrists and chiropractors can be really, really helpful. But I don't, excuse me, I haven't had a, uh, um, any experience with that. And I would need more info to say something intelligent, even if it's not um, medical. So let's see. Uh, um, how do you determine whether your shoe falls under the 5,000 mile warranty? We don't actually measure 5,000s. Um, if you want to know how it works, just go to zeroshoes.com, scroll to the bottom of the page, and you'll see a link to our, about our warranty, and that will tell you how it works. Uh, Jeremiah says, I understand. Have a great day. Your business is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Should your big toe touch the front of the shoe? Sergio asks, personal preference. This is going to sound crazy, but I'll tell you why. So there's this idea that you need a certain amount of space in front of your toes. And that came from shoes like this. Why? Because when you have a sole that's this thick, when it bends, imagine bending a phone book. If you're old enough to remember what a phone book is, when you bend it, the inside bends faster than the outside. Same thing happens with a shoe with a bunch of foam. The inside bends faster and gets effectively shorter. So you need that extra space because of the thick midsole. Because we don't have the thick midsole, that doesn't happen. So it's a total personal preference. I wear mine with my toes right up against the edge because I like the feedback. It's not a problem. I don't get, you know, blackened toenails or whatever. I've run tens of thousands of miles like that. I just like the feedback. Um, it just feels right to me. I also, <laughs> it also reminds me when it's time to cut my toenails. Uh, and, but other people like a little more space. So it's really a personal preference. Again, with sizing, we make recommendations on our website and we do free exchanges, domestic exchanges, uh, or EU, we do the EU version of that. So do, oh my gosh, Jeremiah. Oh, wow. Your comment showed up in the, in the, oh, that's really cool. Wait, I'm going to change that. Uh, sorry. Hold on. Uh, go back to that. Um, that was a, I, I clicked on a thing that made your comment show up. Uh, as a thing, a caption. That's cool. I didn't know that. So uh, anyway, um, uh, so again, personal preference, Sergio. I hope that helps. Oh, so we give recommendations. We do exchanges if, you know, we need to do that. Uh, Diane, I don't, f I don't stretch. I feel like the whole walk is a stretch. I get that. Gabby, I was a great ice skater as a kid. I could do most of the major jumps. Cool. Except the axle, which is crazy, uh, which is an extra half rotation. I never thought of, uh, of it like that for walking. It's just like that. Um, just watch the how to walk video and try to barefoot it. Help. Thanks. Holy smokes. Instant results. I love that. Diane, I don't like my toes touching any more, any more of my shoes than I have to. I just hate the sensation. My ex-husband said I wore clown shoes. 
Again, it's all about personal preference. So look, it's 623. This is the longest one of these we've ever done. I, again, total blast. I'd stay here all night, except I just got text from my wife saying, what are you bringing home for dinner? Um, normally, it's what are you cooking for dinner? But she knows at the end of a long day, I don't have it in me. And um, uh, so let's just do a calling once, calling twice kind of thing. If you've got any pressing issues, toss them in really quick and I'll see what I can do. P.S. If you throw in a comment when we're done with this, I should have said this at the beginning. People will come in and hopefully answer your questions. As always, you can always uh, reach out to us directly. Our customer happiness team is there. That's the info for them. Um, uh, Laura says, thank you. Diane says, leather. I have no idea what, Diane, come on. You know you're not supposed to just throw in something like leather with a question mark without telling me what the hell you're talking about. So, um, so um, um, I don't know, leather's a thing. I don't know what that means. And uh, anyway, um, this has been a total, total pleasure. And oh, Joshua, I wear both the shoes and the sandals. Thank you so much. Is there a design which grips the sole even more to the foot? Um, if it's a sandal, it kind of depends on just how you're lacing things. And for the shoe, it's about lacing things as well. So I don't have any other ideas about that. If you've got some questions, requests, throw them to our customer happiness team and they'll help. Leather for dinner? No. Uh, we're, we're pescatarians. And uh, Isaiah says, thank you. My pleasure. Um, Jeff says, thanks. These are always fun. Again, it's my pleasure. Look, the biggest thing is, like I said earlier, my ears just cleared. I hear a whole new world. Um, happy recent birthday. Thank you, Stu. Um, we started this out of the floor of a corner of a spare bedroom 12 and a half years ago. We had no idea we would, A, have now heard from hundreds of thousands of people who said that what you're doing has changed my life. We had no idea that what we would find out that what big shoe companies have been doing is completely unacceptable. And we're on a mission to help change the world by having people discover the comfort, the benefits, the fun of natural movement. And it's all happening because of you. What we do one piece of the puzzle, everything you're doing, a much bigger piece of the puzzle. So thank you for participating, for sharing, for complaining when it's appropriate, for not complaining when we solve your problems, um, for, for, for being willing to talk to strangers who stop you on the street to ask you about your shoes, uh, for telling people who don't believe you because they're special little snowflakes, why they shouldn't be special. They're not really special little snowflakes for mostly, you know, for, for being part of all of this. This is really, um, I can't tell you how grateful we all, everyone in this company feels. We have an amazing team who they're all happy to be here and happy to be helpful and, and on a mission to, you know, help improve people's lives. I, I half jokingly say we're really a health and wellness company disguised as a footwear brand. Um, but it's really true. And we have a lot of things in the works that are going to hopefully accelerate that and make an even, even bigger difference in the world. But most importantly, again, this has just been a real treat. And Diane says, this is the longest conversation I've had with a man in years. Um, that's very, that's uh, this. Uh, anyway, Diane, we could keep doing this all night. Let's not. Um, I got to get home. So this is, again, this has been a total treat. We will do this again uh, on the third Tuesday in July. But I will tell you, there's going to be other opportunities between now and then for things that I can't tell you about now. So for now, go enjoy your evening or your afternoon or your night, wherever you happen to be. Um, I can't wait to hear what happens. Oh my gosh, someone stopped me at work and asked me about Isaiah shoes and I told him just to get them. <laughs> you can see why I'm single. Joshua says, thank you. All right, I got to stop. We're going to keep doing this all night. Um, most importantly, other than all of my, my heartfelt thanks, just go out, have fun and live life feet first. Take care.